Zach. And I'm Lindsay. And we're the Game Forum, and this is our first impressions on Resident Evil 3. For our first impression videos, we only get to play the game for two hours, and we can't talk to each other about it until this video. Yep, and I guess as a disclaimer, you haven't played Resident Evil 2, correct? No, I haven't really played any of the Resident Evil games in like a couple of years. Okay, so. oh wow. Okay. I well, don't really get into the Resident Evil games, and yeah. I guess we'll, we'll get into some of that here. <laughs> uh, well, what did you think? So, overall, uh, it's pretty much what I expected out of a Resident Evil game. Yeah. Uh, I will probably start off with some of the easiest stuff to talk about, the graphics. So I thought the graphics were really well done. Yes. Like, especially for an updated game, like, this really shines through, like, the fire textures the uh the cinematic scenes all that kind of stuff really looks high polished to me yeah the re engine uh is fairly new i think it was in 2016 2017 is when they like finally like started working on it or at least rebuilding it and like it is really showing uh for this game even with re2 it looked really impressive but for this one it's like they really honed in especially the uh the lighting textures Mm mm-hmm um getting into the lighting there was one thing i found kind of irritating though yeah like in some scenes when you go into a dark area you like automatically have a flashlight that turns on oh and then at other times it doesn't because there were some times where i was going around like nearly completely in the dark looking for stuff and i'm like i can't tell if there's a zombie like a foot in front of me i wish i just had a flashlight on the gun or on my chest or wherever that flashlight is coming from because it doesn't always turn on. I wish there was a little bit more control over that. Yeah, I did notice that. And I, I can't remember in RE2 if there was a, a flashlight that you can manually turn on or if it automatically turned on. But yeah, that I did notice that. I didn't really think yeah, about it. It, no. it just made it kind of annoying because I'm one of the kinds of people who really likes to search around and explore everything. Yeah. And like sometimes I'd just be going around and I'm like, I can't. I can't even see, like, what I'm looking at right now. I'm like, the game looks so pretty, but right now all (laughs) I see is, like, black and gray blobs everywhere. Yeah, yeah, and there's, so, like, with the graphics, they really um, downgraded it in a way, at least some aspects for this. So in RE2, you can, like, fully, um, God, I don't know what the right word is, but, like, the, the enemies will get deformed when you shoot them so like if you mm-hmm. shoot them in the shoulder the, a chunk of flesh will like fly away and if you shoot their arm enough times it'll like hang by a, t- a tad bit of skin and then fall off and stay on the floor in this game if you shoot them in the arm it just disappears there's like a little okay, bit the arm like spider. falls off like it, it shoots the arm off well i wonder if they updated it then because when i was shooting some arms they were just like pop, like they just popped and disappeared There'd be, like, a little blood splatter. Okay, like, when I was shooting some of the zombies, like, the jo- the zombies would take damage. Yeah. Like, they would have, like, a little bullet hole. But if you shot them in the arm, there was one time I shot them in the arm, and, like, their arm, like, I shot them around the elbow, um, and, like, their whole arm, like, fell off, like, below mm-hmm. where I shot at. Well, I need to go back and check that out then, because I played it when it released uh, Thursday night, and you played it, I'm assuming, earlier Yesterday. today, right? Okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I need to go check that out then. Cause, so, I, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just saying, like, going from RE2 to being that, like, for, at least from my perspective, it was, like, super detailed and, like, really gritty, and this one is, like, oh, okay. I mean, they, they cut back on some of the stuff, uh, I, I guess I thought, but then, yeah, like the lighting and the textures, the, even the facial animations are really good. Yes. Now, the faces are really well done. The animations are really well done. Uh, I do want to continue on talking about like the uh, the damage to zombies. And this is yeah. like one of the biggest things that annoys me with Resident <laughs> Evil. Yeah. Um, like it takes like so many shots to put one down. And yeah. And you're given like such a limited amount of ammo. Yeah. Like it, I mean, I get that. I guess they don't want you to just shoot all the zombies, but to me, like just constantly running away gets really annoying. Um, yeah. I'm like I want to 
I want to clear out all the zombies. I want to explore. I want to like see everything. And this game like pretty much just like tries to punish you for doing that. Yeah, I think that's that's the trope for survival horror games. They they tend to give you little ammo and throw a lot at you. And so you really have to like manage your resources and stuff like that. So okay. that's comparing this to The Last of Us, like another survivor horror game. Yeah. Like I never felt like I didn't. I mean, it was always tight, but I mean in this game it's like it takes two or three shots to the head to kill a zombie. Like yeah. If you're playing on like the normal or hard mode, there might be like five bullets and like on a level. I'm like, you have nowhere close to the amount of ammunition you need to even kill all the zombies if you have perfect aim. And of course, they're all like their heads are slunched over. (laughs) They're constantly moving back and forth. It's like designed to make you waste ammo. And like to me, that's kind of like it's not necessarily being hard. That's like being cheap. Cause like that's interesting, that, yeah. Cause like okay, like if you just say, "All right, I want you to run as fast as you can straight forward," and you know you've got uh, thirty seconds, and let's see how far you can make it, is one thing. But then you say, "Okay, I want you to run as fast as you can moving forward," but I've covered the ground in super glue and molasses. I'm like, that's like the feeling playing these games gives me. Yeah. I'm like, everything in the games is like designed not necessarily to be challenging, but like just it just annoys me and like its play style. Huh. So I I have a complaint, but it's actually the exact opposite. And that I feel like this game gives you too much. Um, at least compared to previous games or like what I'm used to, because I love horror games and so I love survival horror. And like as of right now, I am in the sewers, which uh how far did you happen to get? Do you know? I made it to where the sewers start, and that's where I had to cut out. Okay. So I, I made I made it I got the power on, I uh um got separated and pretty well got down to the sewers. And that was, like, around my two-hour mark, so that's about where I stopped. Okay, cool. I got a little further ahead just because I played the demo, so I kind of knew, like, where to go in the downtown area. Um, but, uh, what was I about to say? Yeah, so I got to the sewers. I completely lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. So, like, I have, like, 60 to 70 pistol rounds. I think, like, 20 shotgun rounds, three grenades, and, um... But it the, the crafting system uh, helped with that. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's just because I, I I've played more horror games, so I I don't know. I don't know. That's, like, that's really interesting. Like for me, like uh, I ran out of ammo in one of the first sections, and I'm like, okay, I guess I'll use the knife. The the knife is completely useless. Like I don't think you can kill a zombie with a knife. Well, did you ever shoot their kneecap to have them fall down and then knife their head? I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. Okay. See. Oh man, this is interesting because that that's like a Resident Evil trope, is that you shoot their knees and they fall down and then you knife their head. That's that's like a that's a Resident Evil like kind of thing. Yeah. Like I ended up switching it to the uh, assisted mode because I had like no ammo. Yeah. There's just zombies everywhere, and uh, then it gave me some ammo. And after playing on that mode, like it definitely gives you a lot more stuff than the regular mode. Yeah. And I feel like that should have been the normal mode <laughs> because like a going through, uh, there'd be like five or six zombies in an area and I'd give me like one magazine of like seven rounds. Yeah. And each zombie takes like two to three rounds to put down. And I'm like, okay, I need like, way more ammo than this to clear everybody out. So I'm obviously not supposed to even try and clear everybody out. Yeah. But then, like, even with that, if you cleared out an area, it would then start spawning in other zombies after you've done that. And I'm like, no. I'm like, if you've spent the ammo and the time and resources to clear it out, and ammo is so limited, it should not have a respawn system. Yeah, yeah, I do see that. Um, did you happen to use the red barrels that were kind of yes. laid around? Yeah, okay. I used the I used the red barrels and the electric uh, generator things. Yeah, those helpful. Th- those help a lot. 
Um, now, those definitely help a lot. And yeah. one thing I, I did kind of notice in this game too, and I kind of, I kind of started feeling it was a little cheesy and kind of cheap. Is like there's so many just jump attacks where like you just be walking along, and like someone just comes out of like a car door or like <laughs> something and starts attacking you, and I'm like, okay, like it's like at first I'm like, okay, yeah, there's gonna be that, but like in the two hours I played, there's probably like five or six different jump scares like that. Yeah, and they're not really scary. They're just kind of annoying. It just like beats down your health a little, <laughs> and I'm like, you can't. There's nothing you can do to really prevent that because some of them happen in areas you have to go through. So you're pretty much going to take some damage. And again, like that's not really so much about skill. That's kind of a cheap thing. Now you have to use some more stuff to heal yourself. And yeah. it's like unavoidable. Yeah, I do see that. Um, what else? I don't know. So with crafting... I do like the crafting system. We can we can talk yeah. about that. Like, I like how you know, given you know, you find gunpowder and you find different types of stuff, you can craft it into different types of bullets. Like yeah, you can say, okay, I want shotgun rounds. I'm gonna I'm gonna craft it into this, or I want pistol rounds. I'm gonna craft it into that. Um, so I mean that that kind of stuff I really like. Um, you know, being able to scavenge through, find the stuff, and really craft the things you want. Yeah. Uh, and was I also found a... Uh, did you find the red dot for the pistol? Yeah, in the, that safe. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I thought that was kind of kind of neat. Um, you know, stuff like that, like exploring and, and you know paying attention to what's going on like after i found that safe i'm like okay like i'm looking for like was it aqua or aurora yeah. or something like that yeah aqua. and then 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 finding the the poster with the circled numbers and i'm like okay i get what's going on now <laughs> um one thing that drove me nuts though is uh, i was looking for the bolt cutters like i kept looking for the bolt cutters in all these different sections and, like, I couldn't find any, and I'm, like, finding all these areas with locks on it, and yeah. I'm, like, okay, I don't have any keys, I don't see any keys anywhere, and I kept, like, trying to scour everything, and then I finally got to the section where I found the bolt cutters, and I'm, like, oh, my God, I'm, like, <laughs> now, now I gotta go back to everything and un unbolt everything. Yeah, that is a uh, another trope, not just for Resident Evil, but for horror games in general. There's a lot of, like, Hey, you can't open this exactly. You can't open this door. Go keep going further. Oh, you found the key to go to, you know, like the first Resident Evil was notorious for like this door has a heart shaped lock, and so you have to go get the heart key, or this one has a spade lock, so you have to get the spade key. <laughs> so that's been there since literally the first Resident Evil. Um, it was a little annoying how much was locked away in the first area, and yes. then you you get the lock pick, and it's like do I really want to go all the way back there? And I'm like, of course I did, because of course I want to like get everything. I but, did too. Yeah. Um, I, I guess one thing too, did you find all three gems for the, uh, huh? Yeah, for the clock thing. I could not find the third one, the uh, green one. I can't remember like, exactly where that one was. Like I, I looked around everywhere, and like I, I could not find wherever that one was at. Huh. I don't but, remember. Uh, yeah. I th you get uh, a uh, uh, a hip pouch, which added two more spots to your inventory. That's all. I mean, still, that's a pretty big deal, though. No, it is. It is. But, uh, and, and again, the inventory system in this one is pretty limited. Like, yeah. uh, it gives you just a handful of spaces to uh, to try and work and maneuver with. And then you have to put stuff in storage. And then if you end up, you know, not being able to uh, use it, um, or if you need something you have in storage, then you have to backtrack to a storage locker and get it out and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. I kept putting all the grenades and stuff in storage because I'm like, Ooh, uh, I'm not else? really going to use grenades very much. I don't. I'm not very, not really getting very many of them. Yeah. Well, I guess moving on to the next 
part. This is, uh, what what did you think of Nemesis? Um, I thought he was pretty annoying. Like, <laughs> there's not any really way to stun him, and he just does a lot of damage to you. Yeah, and he constantly gets in the way of where you're trying to go for your next objective. Oh yeah, and I could get if he's like chasing after you and stuff, but it's like. There was a lot of times where I'm like, okay, I need to go through that door. And he's right <laughs> behind me, and then he jumps like to that door. And I'm like, yeah. oh, come on. I'm yeah. like, now what am I supposed to do? Yeah, it takes a ridiculous amount of damage to get him to like kneel. and But that only gives you like 30 seconds to like get away. But he can still like come after you. But uh, no, the, the scenes with Nemesis, like the cut scenes and where he's like chasing you and stuff the first time I thought were pretty intense and that was fun. Yeah, the um, opening was awesome. It was in yeah. first person, which I think was a call back to Resident Evil 7. And so um, that was no, cool. I, I thought that first opening part was really well done. And I'm like, OK, I, mean, I could get into this like this is kind of cool. <laughs> um, and then like, oh, yeah, nope. you know. Then, then uh, you know, getting into the, the zombie bit and all that kind of stuff, I'm like, eh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to finish this one or not. Um, those uh, those spider things and stuff, that was an yeah, interesting that setup. that was pretty intense. Those, I actually had probably more fun in that section than a lot of the sections because, like, they kept spawning from all these places, but they only took two bullets. So yeah. I... To me, it felt more balanced. It's like, okay, like I can shoot him twice. Like it's got some ammo. I kept expecting to meet that big spider thing from the beginning again, but I never did. Uh oh did yeah. You? Um, no, there's like a big that. one that like poisons you or something. Yeah. Um, and like I read the journal note in there, and it's like the last power station is guarded by a big spider and he put this thing down my throat and you know i'm gonna try and get yeah. away and then you know of course he died and yeah. i'm like okay i'm gonna switch over i'm gonna get my heavy stuff out i'm gonna heal up and i go into that last one and there's no giant spider to fight and i'm like <laughs> okay what was what was the point of that journal article then i already know there's one because it attacked yeah. me at the beginning and it said it was going to be here at the end and now it wasn't. So <laughs> I was that was kind of strange. Yeah. Did you happen to die by the infection from the spiders? No. Uh, I read one of the uh, things going out there that said the green herbs can cure it. Yeah. And uh, I had some green herbs I hadn't combined yet. And so uh, when I went out there and then that thing immediately like grabbed me and infected me. I'm yeah. like, oh, that's gross. I'm going to go <laughs> ahead and eat this grass now. That, yeah, that makes yeah. everything better. Uh huh. Um, so I I didn't die either, but I had heard that the death is like really gruesome, and so I looked it up online just to see like how you actually die and you choke to death on um, spiders, little baby spiders, and they come out of your mouth and then they just eat your face. Oh, wonderful! And, uh, yeah, it's uh pretty pretty gnarly for a. I mean, well, I guess it's a zombie apocalypse. Oh yeah, going going back in the beginning just for a second. What did you think of the opening of the the actual game with the live action? Oh, the, the mirror the and everything. Oh no, the, I, the, I like the. I started the, uh, looking at that and I'm like, okay, this can't be real. They can't kill off the main character in like the first ten seconds of the first mission. Yeah. And then she woke up again, and I'm like, okay, that's about what I expected. <laughs> I'm like, this did has you got to uh, be something in her head? Yeah. Did you happen to see like the newscast opening where it's like talking about the pandemic is spreading and everything? Yes. That was crazy that they just open up with, hey, the pandemic is spreading. Like, this this is a uh, pretty close to home. Yeah, especially right now with all this yeah. crazy stuff going on. I did <laughs> think it was a little strange, like the whole opening was done in live action though. Yeah. Like, I was like, you, you I guys was like okay, this is different. <laughs> yeah. It was a uh... I mean, I guess, you know, they were like, eh, it doesn't matter. You know, it's it's a video game. Well, I'm, People, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just not what I was expecting, because most yeah. games tend to stick with everything in engine. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. Uh, well, I guess we could talk about the story, but I, I, I've i never been a fan of the Resident Evil story. 
at least mm. like to an extent. And well, I think I mean the, hours, I guess the overall mission setup because you know we've yeah. I've only played two hours of this game I don't know the overarching story and we can save that for a review yeah but I mean overall the mission setup in this. I mean, I did enjoy, like, going around and, like, okay, I got to turn the power generators on. I got to find it. I got to go do this. I like the level setup where there's, like, you know, a lot of, like, height and depth to it where you can go upstairs and cut chains off doors and find locks. Like, once I had the tools to do everything and then had ammo to handle stuff on the uh, assisted mode, like, I did have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Um, more fun than I thought I was gonna have. Well, that's good. Um, because I kind of went into this being like, eh, I don't know, and then like playing it on the regular mode first. I'm like, yeah, this is pretty much what I expected. <laughs> um, but with the with the existed mode on, and like having the ammo to deal with a lot of the enemies, and not really being punished so much for it. And being able to take my time and explore and, you know, really just take in the whole level and have fun doing the missions. Yeah. Like, I did, I did enjoy it after that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess having different, like, with me already playing Resident Evil and then you being, like, this is your first, well, I guess it's not, is it your first Resident Evil? Well, you it's not my played. first, but, I mean, it's, like, the first one since, like, probably PlayStation 2 or something. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, yeah, that's that definitely helped. I guess I'm just kind of like used to a lot of the ideas that they push forward. Um, and like speaking of, you know, like the two hours that we put in, we're about a third of the way through the game. The game is only like five to six hours long. Oh, really? That's short. Yeah. So Resident Evil 2 was a little bit longer, but it had two playthroughs. So you played through as Leon and then you could play as Claire afterwards. But you can also play as Claire first and then play as Leon and you get a different experience. So the game was like much longer. And so the Project Resistance, which is the multiplayer thing they tacked on, was totally just to buff out the $60 pay thing. This yeah, game is yeah. not worth $60 at all. Maybe 30 but like for six yeah, hours. For a, a five or six hour game with really only one playthrough, that is not a $60 title. Yeah, they do, however, add a shop uh, in the menus after you beat the game, and it, you can buy, you get points based off of things you do within the play your first playthrough. And, and when you continue play doing play, playthroughs, there's like kill a total of 200 zombies, and you get like 2,000 points. But then there's these tokens that you can buy, and it can be like it increases your damage or it increases your defense, or you can buy a pistol with unlimited ammo, and there, so it. It adds a sense of replayability, but you're just doing the same thing. Hmm. And there is a trophy for beating the game in less than two hours. So I'm um, like, that's God. If, if you can speed run this game in two hours, this is not a, a sixty dollar release at launch. Yeah, that does that does kind of make it seem a little bit more limited. Um, yeah. So I guess like overall, what were your favorite parts of the game and what were stuff you didn't like on the game? Main thing I didn't like was Nemesis because, and this is compared to Mr. X in Resident Evil 2. So in mm-hmm. Resident Evil 2, Mr. X was in the, the, the police department that you were in and he was there like all the time. He can run across, he, y'all can just come across each other and then it's like intense and you got to run away. But... Yeah there's he would like he's always there he's constantly walking around you can hear his footsteps if he's upstairs and you're downstairs you you know exactly where he's at because you can hear his footsteps for resident evil 3 nemesis is very linear it is like once you get to this section now you got to deal with nemesis and then you get away and then you don't got to deal with them anymore i thought that was really annoying because that just going off of resident evil 2 to this it's kind of like oh this this feels like it should have been a tacked on uh, campaign to RE2. It doesn't yeah. feel like, you know, it's a full fledged game. What I did like about it, it's just as fun as Resident Evil 2. You know, it's still the same controls. It still looks really good. The graphics are good. Um, you know, the inventory system is still there. Uh, did you happen to play Project Resistance at all? I, I did not. So I played one match just to get an idea of how it was. 
it's it's okay. It's definitely nothing to like brag about, and I have no interest in playing it again. Uh, whenever so I what, turn- what is it exactly? Is it like some people play as zombies, some people play as people? Like what so what is Project Resistance? It's four v one, four survivors, and one mastermind. And the mastermind places traps and zombies in this maze that you're trying to get through. And then eventually they can call in a Mr. X or a tyrant or like, and you can control those people, these people. And so it's basically four people just trying to get through these sections and, but there's puzzles. And so you got to find all these pieces and stuff. It's really cool, but it's really glitchy and it's really difficult. Ah, but it's tacked on to a $60 game. So I guess they somehow find a value in that. I don't know. I mean, at least that sounds like something uh, cool to add in some value to it. Yeah, uh, it is cool, but I, it's just not something I'm interested in. I, I really don't like these asynchronous, you know, 1v4 games. Uh, mm. Kind of like with the Predator, you know, first impressions we did last week. It's kind of like, it's cool in concept, but I, I'm not, like, super drawn to yeah. it. No, I, I kind of take them or leave them. I do think it's an interesting concept, but uh, I, I guess finishing out with my final thoughts on this game... Uh, I kind of went into this game um, kind of not liking some of the premise of Resident Evil yeah. uh, on the just normal play setting. I feel kind of validated in that. It it feels like it does a lot of things to like make things more difficult by being cheap than like putting more thought into things. Like, yeah. you know, instead of being like, I want you to build a bridge to go across this expanse and you can have good materials. You just have to figure out the trick to doing it. It's like, I want you to build a bridge to go across this expanse. Here's a paper clip and some bubble gum. Like I'm like now, uh, but under the assisted mode, uh, where you get like enough ammo to deal with stuff. And after getting the, uh, lock pick and the, uh, um, chain cutters like I really enjoyed like playing through it and exploring everything I thought the graphics were well done it wasn't buggy yeah um, that is true I didn't uh, notice any bugs at all no I didn't notice any bugs at all so I had a very high level of polish uh, nemesis was kind of annoying but I mean I get that's what he's supposed to do he's supposed to harass the player yes um, so I mean that's you know that's that's fine that's his, he's serving his purpose <laughs> um, and I definitely like the, the first encounter with Nemesis because it's like very intense. I just kind of wish it kept that kind of level, you know, throughout the game. Kind of like what you said, because after a while he just disappears and you're yeah. just going around and everything's fine. And, and then all of a sudden he's back and then, you know, he's not. So it, yeah. it's kind of inconsistent with Nemesis a little. Yeah. But I mean, it seems weird. I agree. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> overall. Overall, I, I think, uh, you know, for $60, not really my thing. I don't think it's really worth that. No. Um, if you're a big Resident Evil fan, maybe. Um, if you're not a Resident Evil fan, I'd, I'd say, you know, probably stay away from it. Maybe it goes on sale yeah. for 20 bucks or something. Yeah. Uh, even if, like, from my perspective, being a Resident Evil fan, I wouldn't spend $60 on this. Knowing how short it is. Yeah. And coming off of Resident Evil 2, it's just kind of like, it's a little disappointing. But to be fair, this was released a year after Resident Evil 2. That's almost unheard of. Yeah. So well, I, I guess take what you can, I guess. I guess that's our uh, first impressions of uh, Resident Evil 3. Don't forget yeah. to like, share, and subscribe. Let us know what you think in the comments below. I'm Zach. And I'm Lindsay. We're the Game Forum. <laughs>